This is Sean, and today I'm coming to you to talk a little bit about Smart Notebook 11. I've had a lot of questions recently about some of the new tools and the new features that are available in Smart Notebook 11. And if you look across the top, you'll see that the toolbar has changed quite a bit. And actually what Smart has done here is they've taken some of the tools and rather than have a multitude of tools stretching across the toolbar at the top, They've clustered some of those together so that it's a little bit easier to work. So for instance, to give you an example, if you click on the pins tool as I am right now, you'll notice that they've clustered all the different types of pins together, um, such as the pin, um, the highlighter, the, and the magic pin, and the creative pin. But they've also added a couple of things, uh, such as the, the crayon, which is new. Uh, so all of you um, K through two teachers will really appreciate having that one. Um, and at the same time, with some of those tools, in addition to being able to open the tool, you also have some of the properties that pop up next to the tool when it's open. So that makes it a lot easier to modify your pins as you're working with them. Uh, so, you know, like for instance, if I click on the line style for the pin, I can change the thickness of the pin and be able to use it right away. So let's back up just here for a second and take a look at some of these things um, that have changed. From the left, you'll notice that the previous and the next buttons, those have not changed. They're still the same. Uh, next to that, we have the undo and redo buttons. Um, as you know, has always been, um, we have open file, save, and add a page. But in addition to add a page, now you have delete page. So for instance, uh, if I back up in my page sorter view and click on page one here, I can simply hit delete page and, and it gets rid of that page right away. So that's, a, that's something that's new to the default toolbar. The full screen icon has been moved over a little bit farther to the left from where it usually is in the default screen. And in addition to the full screen, you have at a glance a whole host of features that, you, that used to be hidden and embedded in the menus up here at the top in the view menu but now they're available as part of the full screen option. And from here you can choose to go full screen or you can also choose to, rather than have a separate tool on the toolbar uh, for a transparent background, you can choose, you can choose the uh, view screens option and change to a transparent background or a dual page display. Or you can change the zoom on your screen using one of these presets. You also have the options of changing from entire page to page width so that it just fits what becomes more comfortable to you and the, and the student in the classroom. Um, within this cluster, we also have paste. Uh, we have the screen capture tool, uh, which has always been my favorite tool. Nice little tool so that you can capture content from websites, programs, and then put them right onto your notebook page. Um, you have the screen shade, which is not changed. It's, it's still the same. Um, you have your smart document camera tool. And for those of you that have the smart document camera, that's, that's a great feature so that, you know, you can actually use your document camera without having to change the input on your projector from the computer to the document camera and back. It's very nice to have. But one thing that has changed quite a bit is the table tool. Now, the table tool, you're still able to choose how many cells you would like in your table um, and add that to the page. But with that table tool, there have there are some features that have changed slightly. For instance, um, when you when you add anything to the page, let's go ahead and go here to the gallery and we'll find a couple of pieces that we can throw onto the page so that we can use them here. We'll throw a guitar out here and we'll make us we'll just make it small so it doesn't take up so much of the page. Um, the castanets just need a couple of things here. And you'll notice, as always, when you uh, hover anything over a cell, uh, the selected cell has a blue bracket around it. And then when you let go of your mouse button, it just drops and resizes that item so that it fits into the cell. Um, you can still resize the rows as you want to. But one thing that has changed is we've always been able to add a cell shade to a cell. But what has changed is when you clicked on the cell shade in the past, it would go away and you couldn't get it back. Now they have this little thumbnail up in the left corner of the cell 
it allows you to click and bring that cell shade back. So it allows you to toggle between the shade on and the shade off. So that's that's kind of a new feature that's been added. Um, in addition to the cells, um, we still have our measurement tools. The measurement tools are clustered together, clustered together, so you can have a ruler, protractor, and um, any of the math tools that you want to use at your fingertips. Um, they've placed a toolbar, a toolbar icon for the Smart Exchange on the Smart Notebook 11 uh, toolbar, which is very nice. You don't have to go to the Gallery tab and then hunt for that link to the Exchange. It's right there on the toolbar so that you can use it very quickly. And of course, uh, if you've never used the Exchange, go ahead and join. It's free to join. Uh, once you create an account and log in, you have at your fingertips a multitude of lessons that have been uploaded to the Smart Exchange by other teachers like you, and, and they're free to use. So it's a very useful tool. Uh, you have your Smart Response buttons here, um, so that if you click on this icon, it shows your, your options to create a question or insert a question or start um, an assessment if you want to. Um, but again, the biggest change here is that once you click on some tools such as the pen as I showed you earlier or the shapes, all of those properties pop open so that you can choose your shape, you can choose your fill color, your line color, um, the thickness, the line style, and the transparency of the tool. So it, it makes things a lot easier. There's no jumping back and forth between drawing a tool then grabbing the uh, select tool and then going to the properties tab and changing that it's all right here on the toolbar so that you can change it before you ever draw the item on the page so you know if I want in the past if I wanted a triangle that was filled with orange I would have to go to fill effects pick solid fill pick orange and then it would be affected now I can just choose orange fill triangle and draw it oh it didn't work but it does allow me to go back and change it very quickly without actually having to jump back and forth between the properties tab at the left. Um, so again, not a huge number of changes to the toolbar, but enough so that it kind of streamlines it, makes it a little bit easier to use, a little bit easier on the eyes when you're looking at it. Um, it will take some getting used to if you're not used to it, um, but but it, again, you know, it's, it's well worth having um, that change. One other change that they've added is the Activity Builder, and that takes a little bit of time in and of itself to explain, so we're going to create another video for that later on, so stay tuned and, and check back with, in with us for that one. And of course, if, as always, if you ever have any questions, just send me an email.